Mr. President, uh, I, I, uh, I was just listening to Senator Whitehouse, who's now in the chair, and I just want to congratulate him uh, on filing that uh, amicus brief with Senator McCain in the Supreme Court. I, I really believe that, that the uh, Supreme Court should heed the good advice that both Senator McCain and Senator Whitehouse have given them. And I think if they do not heed that advice, uh, they will be, uh, the, the authority that they have un undertaken themselves will be taken away from them by the people, uh, the people that are urging a constitutional amendment to give this back to the Congress and back to the state legislatures. And I, I, uh, I join my colleagues today to highlight what I consider a significant problem in our country, the unprecedented flow of money into our democratic elections. Over the past several months, a group of us have been working together to address this problem. We have asked the FEC, the IRS, and the FCC to take actions that would help curb the impact of money on our elections. Led by Senator Whitehouse, we have introduced the Disclose Act. This bill would shine a light into the dark corners of the campaign finance system. And Senator Bennett and I have introduced a constitutional amendment, which currently has 22 co-sponsors, to overturn the disastrous judicial opinions that have led to the broken system we have today. In January 2010, the Supreme Court issued its opinion in Citizens United versus FEC. Two months later, the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals decided the Speech Now versus FEC case. These two cases gave rise to the super PACs. Millions of dollars now pour into negative and misleading campaign ads, and often without disclosing the true source of the donations. But our campaign finance system was hardly a model of democracy before these disastrous opinions. The Citizens United and Speech Now decisions renewed our concerns about campaign finance. But the court laid the groundwork many years ago. We can go all the way back to 1976. That year, the court held in Buckley versus Vallejo that restricting independent campaign expenditures violates the First Amendment right to free speech. In effect, that money and speech are the same thing. The damage is clear. Elections become more about the quantity of the cash and less about the quality of ideas, more about the special interests and less about public service. We cannot truly fix this broken system until we undo the flawed premise that spending money on elections is the same thing as exercising free speech. That only can be achieved in two ways. The court could overturn Buckley and subsequent decisions based on it, something the current court seems highly unlikely to do, or we amend the Constitution to not only overturn the previous bad court decisions, but also to prevent future ones. Until then, we will fall short of the real reform that is needed. In Federalist number 49, James Madison argued the U.S. Constitution should be amended only on great and extraordinary occasions. I believe we have reached one of those occasions. In today's political campaigns, our free and fair elections, a founding principle of our great democracy, are for sale to the highest bidder. I know amending the Constitution is difficult, and it should be, but we didn't start this effort last year or even in the last Congress. Others before us have urged that this long-standing problem needs a long-term solution. Many of our predecessors understood the corrosive effect money has on our political system. They spent years championing the cause. Senator Fritz Hollings introduced bipartisan constitutional amendments similar to our amendment in every Congress from the 99th Congress to the 108th Congress. Senators Schumer and Cochran introduced one in the 109th Congress. And those were all before the Citizens United decision, before things went from bad to worse. The out of control spending since that decision has further poisoned our elections. But it has also ignited a broad 
movement to amend the Constitution. I participated in a panel discussion in January with several activists in this movement. One of the panelists, Maryland State Senator Jamie Raskin, was asked about overcoming the difficulty of amending the Constitution. Jamie said, and I quote, a constitutional amendment always seems impossible until it becomes inevitable. I think we are finally reaching the point of inevitability. Across the country, more than 200 local resolutions have passed calling for a constitutional amendment to overturn Citizens United. Legislatures in four states, Hawaii, Vermont, Rhode Island, and my home state of New Mexico, have all called on Congress to send an amendment to the states for ratification. Many more states have similar resolutions pending. Over a million citizens have signed petitions in support of an amendment. And more than 100 organizations under the banner of United for the People are advocating for constitutional remedies. This grassroots movement is yielding progress. In addition to our amendment, several other campaign finance related amendments have been introduced in the House and the Senate. Senators Leahy and Durbin recently announced that Chairman Durbin's Judiciary Subcommittee on the Constitution will hold a hearing on the Senate proposals on July, in, uh, will hold a hearing on the Senate proposals in July. I thank them for their support. The hearing will be a great opportunity to examine the different approaches to solicit input from constitutional experts, and to have a national discussion about the need to return our elections to the American people. I hope this dialogue will convince some of my Republican colleagues to join me. Fixing our campaign finance system is only a partisan issue in Washington. A recent Washington Post ABC News poll found that nearly 70 percent of registered voters would like super PACs to be illegal. Among independent voters, that figure rose to 78 percent. But the court, in its misguided reading of the First Amendment, told the Congress that we can't rein in super PACs. In doing so, it gave millionaires and billionaires unchecked power to influence our elections. It has allowed a flood of PAC money to drown out the voices of average Americans. This is a fatal misreading of the real world of political campaigns, and it is wrong. Supporters of super PACs and unlimited campaign spending claim they are promoting the democratic process. But the public knows better. Wealthy individuals and special interests are buying our elections. Citizens United has really meant citizens denied. Our nation cannot afford a system that says, come on in to the rich and powerful, and says, don't bother to everyone else. The faith of the American people and their electoral system is shaken by big money. It is time to restore that faith. It's time for Congress to take back control. And Mr. President, just let me say, I know the, the senator from Rhode Island, as, as uh, uh, Senator Whitehouse, has worked very hard on this issue, has pulled us together. We're going to have others. Uh, I believe, join us in this hour. Uh, the crucial thing we're trying to say is we need reform, we need disclose, we need, to, we need to get to the bottom of what's happening in this broken system and, and get our democracy back for the American people. So with that, I would uh, note the absence of a quorum.